Audio mastering for musicians. Audio mastering is the process that you use to get the best possible recording ever. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the process here. Let's talk about EQing. You want to use your parametric EQ when you're doing mastering. And you want to use little tiny little bits of feather EQing as they call it. So little tiny moves with your EQ. If you make too many big moves, the audio will go out of phase. At the end of your mastering process, you can use an in-phase meter to check out and see if your audio is still in phase after you've done your mastering. The meter will usually probably go up to about plus one and shows that it is in phase. You want to use generally good monitors for mastering. You can get a, a good set of JBL monitors for about $400. Using compression in the mastering process. Compression keeps the bottom frequencies tight and compresses the high ones. So to get a nice quality sound with your compression, a warm type of sound, you want to use it to about 6.5. That'll give you warm results. At the end of your mastering process, you want to use dither, which is also called white noise. Now dither will cancel out any noise floor wherever the noise level is. Say your noise floor is minus 30. If you put a little bit of dither or white noise over it, it will suppress the noise level at that level. So you want to generally use this at the last process before you print your CD. Using acoustic panels in your studio. You can have all the best equipment out there. If your studio is not paneled acoustically properly, um, it can hurt your recordings. Back to monitors. You want your monitors to be mastering monitors. You don't want to do your mastering through near field monitors. The difference between a near field monitor and mastering monitors, the base frequency range is much higher in mastering monitors, like probably like plus 40. DB, it just judges the sound a lot more accurately. That, accurately, that's why they're called mastering monitors. Limiting, limiting. You want to probably do this after you do your compression. What a limiter will do, it will keep the sound from going over zero DB in your meters, so it doesn't go into the red. Keep in mind, though, if you were to put your limiting settings to 10 your limiter is going to turn into a compressor. So, you know, try not to get it up to that level and use it below that level. Editing your audio. You want to make sure that your audio is clean. It has no audible distortion in it. It has no clicks or pops in it. So you can use your click and pop settings to get those things out. You want to make sure that there's generally no flaws in the recording and it sounds clean and stuff when you're doing the mastering process. So you can generally do this before you use your compression or your EQing and all this to make sure that everything's clean and there's none of these um, you know, faults in the recording. Let's talk about stem mastering. Stem mastering is a somewhat new process now where you will be mastering different tracks by themselves or different instruments by themselves. So you'll take a, a drum line or drum recording and you'll master it and then you'll go to a guitar and you'll master it and you go through the same mastering process but just do it separately from everything um, and then splice it all together and uh, many people have said this is they've had really good results for this so there might be something that you want to try so uh, there it is and give it a try after you've got all this done you want to play it back many times and you want to, it to make you feel like the earth is going to move. So when you've gone through your feather EQing and you're playing it through your monitors, if it feels like the earth is going to move because it sounds so good, you generally want to print it to CD. Um, so the last process here is referencing um, the end result here. So referencing your master or your music. So you want to play it through different monitors like uh, computer monitors um, and reference the sound 
and so it sounds good, good on just about every speaker that you're playing it through, whether it's computer or you have a computer monitor speakers, and so it sounds good on just about every speaker going. And there you go. So you're pretty much on your way to being a great mastering engineer. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.